black owned businesses in the Houston area to bring you informational videos to help you thrive in your everyday life and your business as well. So make sure you guys are tuned in because we have some great things in store for you. How you guys doing? I am Coach JP Bryant, AKA Jam and Play, all right, which stands for just achieving more while prospering and learning assets for you. I go with the formula, B plus E equals A. All that means is belief plus effort equals assets. So believe, we know, we know that faith is believing, right? But now we know that also it has to come with a little effort, it has to come with a little work. And that equals the assets. And now we can play a little bit. All right. So all that is is faith without works is dead. All right. So here we go. Now we got to understand. Okay. We believe in ourselves. Okay. We got the faith. Now it's time for the effort. Here's the effort piece. Here's how I invested in my first investment property. Right. Which is now an Airbnb. Okay. Actually, I get to profit every month, which is consistent cash flow. So the first step, and this is a question I get all the time. How do you get started? What happens when you get started? Do I have to have any funds? Do I really have to put anything down? What is it? <laughs> so it all depends on what game you're trying to play. All right? You can do zero down or 20%, 20% down, whatever have you have to know the terms, which I'm going to get to in a few minutes. All right, so when we playing this game, I like to I like to look at it like it's, it's, it's football, and I'm a football coach. So I'm going to do this thing by quarters. So the first quarter, how do you get it started? Know your financial situation first. Know your financial situation and save to invest, right? And then sign up for free. All right. Two, know your criteria. All right. Know your criteria. Know what you're going to get into. Know what type of property you want to invest in. Whether it's a single family or a multi family. Whether it's a commercial real estate, which is multi family. All right. So know that. Know the pros and cons of those two as well. So you got to do your homework. That's the second quarter. Third quarter means it is knowing your terms. So when you know the terms, you know the language, all right? When we were in school, the first thing that we learned is vocabulary. You must know how to speak the language and understand the language. Meaning, you have to know what a ROI is, you have to know what cash or clothes and closing cost is. You must understand these terms so you can negotiate. Bingo. In business, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. So we have to study our terms. We must know our expenses, right? So we can know what our return on our investment, which is the ROI, is. And once the negotiations line up with our terms, which is the language, which is the deal maker because it's the terms in the contract that will help you make and determine whether it's a good deal or a great deal. Whether you're going to put zero down and have a, a, a you know, possibly an APR, which is, which is meaning the annual percentage rate will go up over time, or you will have a fixed rate which is the same rate over the course of 15 or 30 years. And, and, and when you do that math and you learn, okay, what's my best return on my investment, now you can negotiate some deals and it's time for a touchdown, right? So to close out on the deal, to close out on the game, and bingo, there you have it.
Welcome back, Black Bookers. This is the second segment of Black Book Academy. We're here with James Paul Bryan of Jam and Play. Uh, he gave you guys a few pointers. I hope y'all been taking notes. And if you haven't, here's another good time where you can start taking notes. So JP, man, you told us a lot of information about you know how you guys started in investing, and you know you gave us some real good keys and some real good pointers. Mm -hmm. uh, but at this point in time, like let's talk more about the Airbnb. I know you started your own Airbnb. How, like, how did that process come about? Well, first, man, I want to thank y'all for allowing this opportunity, man. There's nothing, there's nothing like giving, you know what I mean? And I'm here to give you a free game. So, first of all, I understood that in order for me to attain a real asset, I must own it first. I must own it, and in order to own it, you know, I have to OP, use OPM, which is using other people's money. The way you do that is you get tenants. You, you invest in an uh, uh, investment property mm -hmm. and you get tenants to sh pay your mortgage for you. So I kind of thought, I was like, man, I'm in, I'm in the city of Houston, the fourth largest city. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right by the airport. You know, I had a plan. I'm like, if I'm gonna invest in a property, like this is one of the biggest purchases in your life. I want to be strategic about my criteria. And your criteria is what kind of property you want to get, where is it located, and all the other things that come along with choosing your property. Right. So I understood, like, okay, if I have it, probably about you know a minute or two, three minutes away from the airport, and it's 10 minutes from downtown, 15, 15 minutes from NRG, you know, that's, it's a win-win for me because when you invest in a property location, location, location is the most one of the most important things. Absolutely. Especially when you want when you want to sit consistent cash flow. When you don't want any vacancy. You know what I mean? So I understood that. So I started Airbnb and uh man this God has been blessing me, man. It's it's, it's all him. I'm just, it's all God. And I, and I actually prayed, man, for him. Before I even went through the process, I said, God, if this, if this be for me, uh, you know, allow me to have it. If it's not, let your will be done. Yeah. And he allowed it, and it was a, a, the smoothest process, man. Yeah. And that's kind of what I, I took everyone through when I when I was through the first se segment was just the process and attaining the property. And now we're talking about, okay, the actual practical part of Airbnb. And it's very beneficial because it's consistent cash flow for okay. your property. Yeah. So, so, so let's, let's get into that, man. Uh, I appreciate you putting emphasis on having faith, man. That's a huge, huge, huge deal. And any success in life, you know, I'm a firm believer that as well. You have to have faith. Um, but going back into the Airbnb, so uh, like, what are some of the pros and some of the cons of renting out your space or you know, Airbnb? Okay. So, I'm gonna start with the cons. Reason why is because most people like to sell you, so they want, they so high on selling that they don't tell you the full thing. One thing about me, as you know, we gonna keep it all the way Now we gonna tell the truth about you. So, uh, but um, I'm gonna tell you the truth about this. Now, when it comes to investments, you know, people say risk is involved. You know, it, it's, it's anytime you step, you wake up, you risking something. Absolutely. But faith wouldn't exist without risk. Exactly. So, with me understanding that, I knew, okay, I need to step into some faith. Mm -hmm. And me stepping into some faith, like, I, okay, now I'm, I'm jumping into Airbnb. Wow, like, now I got something, somebody in my property that I purchased. Yep. It's not there, so they ain't going to. They not gonna take care of it, which leads me to the con. So I have had, you know, some guests that had some damages. Mm -hmm. You know, had some damage, some damages. You know, it got it got it get it got pretty bad. Um, they didn't follow the guest rules. Um, but that's what just comes with business. There's issues, but the best business owner know how to have a solution to the problem. So what I did was I kind of mitigated the risk by, by first of all, scaling my business, knowing that, okay, in order for me to attract a certain caliber 
of, of tenants. I need to raise my price a little bit to, you know, to fit a certain class. You know, no, you know, no offense to anybody. Right. But I understand that certain people hasn't been exposed to luxury. Mm-hmm. So some people just don't know how that. Right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to just to be honest, man, and uh, you know, another thing I did, I just stopped doing natives. Meaning, if you were from Houston, it's gotcha. why why would you be you know rent, renting you out know Airbnb? We know we know you about, know you about to turn up. Yeah, you gonna turn it's up. going down. Yeah, and it's going down <laughs> in my property. So hold on, now. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, if yeah, if I see you seven one three eight three two or two eight one on that area code, that's real. Now, uh, buddy, and that's another thing that's good about Airbnb. Um, they allow you to accept or decline, mm-hmm. so you can you know? be selective. So you can be selective, be selective. Your, your right? Yeah. And when I welcome all people, as long as you mm-hmm. respect the property, I, I would welcome any and everybody, and let, as long as you respect the property. You know what I mean? So, and, so the two takeaways that we got so far is one, you raise the price because you understand your value and your worth of your property, and you, you understand the caliber of tenants that you want at your property. So by raising the price, you, you don't get somebody who's maybe like eighteen or nineteen who may not appreciate your exactly. space. You know what I'm saying? You have like that older crowd who's making enough. You know what I'm saying? Money to afford, you know, to be in a luxury space. Exactly. And you're going to appreciate your stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And then the second thing you said, he was being selective as to not allowing Houston natives, which makes sense because more than likely, if somebody from Houston is going to rent an Airbnb in Houston, they're going to try to party or, you know what I mean, do something wrong. So right. that makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much, you know, the only con. You know, you don't know how somebody else would take care of your property like you would. You know what I mean? And another con is, you know, you don't know also when they're going to book. You know, mm-hmm. when you got short term rentals. You have long term rentals. Right. Okay, you have this consistent. They're paying they're paying rent every month. Got you. So so what does a long term rental look like for the people out there who don't know? So long term rentals are, are you they usually have a landlord. Mm-hmm. So um let's just say you got we you know Let's just say you got a college student and college student stays off campus. Right. But you know that, but if the property belongs to somebody else, so the college student must pay the property owner every month in order to continue staying there. So, and let's say if it's a 12 month lease, they must continue to pay rent uh, month to month. Or that well, 12 months. Yeah. 12 months. So they'll, 12 months. They'll pay it up in advance yeah. at, at times. Right. So they'll gotcha. put down the deposit and then they'll, they'll do that or first month rent. Gotcha. And first month. Yeah. Um, now I'm familiar with other people who do Airbnb as well. Right. And they, they'll have, so they may have like a fourplex and they may rent out two of the, two of the spaces for that's, Airbnb, that's two it. of the spaces for long term rentals. That's is, it. is that something that you. Man, that get, that is definitely it? my not next. I'm, Believe it, I'm claiming it. Yeah. You know, it's power in the tongue, you know, life and death lies in the tongue. I know that my next one or soon in the future mm-hmm. will be a uh, multifamily. So that's that's something that you can benefit from. I know I also know somebody that he lives in one, he has an Airbnb in the, in the other one, he has a triplex, and, and he and he's the landlord of the of the one at the bottom. Alright, so now you have Consistent cash flow with the Airbnb and it's by the medical center. Mm-hmm. So oh, location, <laughs> location is not far from downtown. It's in the middle of everything. Then you got the landlord at the bottom that's bringing you in the profit. Right. So you, you say you say medical center too. So I'm sure he probably have a contract with a travel nurse. Exactly. You know I'm getting agency that. and all that kind of stuff. So I hadn't even told you this yet, yes. but that. Remember, we talked about scaling the business and, and, and targeting the audience. So, I actually just closed on a deal yesterday, you know, with the traveling nurse for six weeks, wait, well, because they get six week assignments. Wow. And I kind of realized, okay, unfortunately, we 